Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the SPC Maker 140X. Now, I've said this before but I've actually been avoiding SPC Maker products for the most part. But the specs on this one have enticed me in. So SPC Maker have a reputation of giving their models really high spec components and because of that it usually means that their prices are high as well. But I think they've actually got something missing in their company and I think what they're missing is a pilot or somebody to test their stuff out because they have released some very high priced duds in the past. On the other hand though, this model is specced to be one of the quickest on the market and while it's fairly high priced, this is a 3 inch model and it's my favourite category because not only are they seriously outperforming the 5 inch class at the moment, they come under the 250 gram weight limit and that's using a hefty 4 cell battery as well and that is the case with this one so it's 141 grams without a battery and 244 grams with a 850 milliamp 4S. So it came in a static bag and I think it was Diatone that used to do that, wasn't it? And it gives the impression that it's all ready to go and it does look all ready to go, except from the fact that the battery strap wasn't installed. But that's no big deal, right? Well, it turns out that they haven't left enough room for the battery strap to feed through the frame. And that's because they have neatly soldered in the motor wires underneath the ESC board. And a lot of companies leave you to put the battery strap in yourself. And I set everything up and I armed the motors and guess what? One of the motors wasn't spinning. And that was because one of the solder joints had come off in me trying to get this damn battery strap to feed through. So, do you see what I mean about there being a missing link here somewhere? And it doesn't stop there either because the strap that they give you isn't long enough to fit around a 4 cell battery. So, I've put this yellow, garish, longer one in here. It's the only one that I had spare, unfortunately. And the way that I did that was to take the entire frame and stack apart. I mean, I had to do that anyways to resolder the ESC wire. So why didn't they provide a decent battery strap and have it in there from the start if it was going to be a cramped build? It's almost like they've got a guy telling them what components are good, but they don't actually give it to someone to find out that you can't even get the battery strap to feed through. I don't know, you guys let me know if I'm being majorly picky here, but you know, this is a premium product to me and I've never had a solder join break from trying to feed a battery strap through before. So when I took everything apart I also changed the placement of the receiver. So this is the bind and fly version with an XM plus and it was just hanging loose out of the back and I think that they have done that so that you can get to the bind button easily. But you can also access the bind button where I've placed it here and I've just put it on a sticky pad there. And it's flashed with the international version of the firmware and it's not flashed with the RSSI firmware. Right, I'm going to try and be nice now because the component choice I actually like. So the frame is 3 mil carbon and it feels really strong. And the motors are my favourite. So they are the RC InPower 1506 4100 kV motor, which is the same powerful motor that's on the Skyzone S140. And that model currently holds my 3 inch speed record of 112 mile per hour. And it comes with a set of the Jamfan Flash 3052s as well. But you're only given one set, so I think a spare set would have been nice, especially for this price. I don't think this guy is actually going to beat the Sky Zone's speed because it's 4 grams heavier. However, I do have a trick up my sleeve today because I've gone and bought the Tattoo R-Line 850mAh 4S battery, which can provide more amps than the... 850 milliamp tattoo battery that gave that 112 mile per hour speed reading before so potentially I might be able to go faster with this battery but I would also expect the S140 to go faster with it too. So yeah, you aren't given a battery in the package with this one. You also aren't given a silicon battery mat and it's definitely going to throw a battery if you don't use one. So you're going to have to add your own. 
And I do like the heat shrink around the arms to keep the motors tidy. I have to give it to SPC Maker. They do make a really tidy model. And the soldering is always on point as well. I know that the solder join broke, but that's from there not being enough space in there, not from, you know, bad soldering. So the stack is made up of a D-Shot 600 capable 20 amp BL Hell yes 4-in-1 ESC board and above that we have an Omnibus F4 SD flight controller with Betaflight flight on-screen display and on the top of that we have SPC Maker's own 40 channel switching VTX I think it's called the VX86 so it switches from 25 milliwatt to 100 milliwatt and all of that is done through the one button and it does not have smart audio and there's a couple of LEDs on there that tell you the channel, the band, and the power. And you aren't given any instructions with this at all, so you'll have to check out the listing for the VX86 for the channel chart. But you know what? I wouldn't bother because it doesn't seem to match up correctly anyways. So I've used a band scanner on my goggles and it doesn't match the website so to get the right channel I had to you know just play about with the button sequence so it's a three second press of the button and then the red LED will flash once and the green LED flashes for your number of channels then another three second press sends the red LED flashing twice and then the green LED becomes the band selection and then a further three second press sends the red LED to three flashes and the green LED then flashes twice for the two different power options so Two flashes is 100 milliwatt and one flash is 25 milliwatt. It was set to 100 milliwatt out of the box. So the antenna is a sleeve dipole and it's directly soldered to the board. And interestingly, the VTX has no wires going to it. So it slots onto the pins of the flight controller. And by the way, there is one free UART on the flight controller. So if you want to upgrade the VTX at a later date, you can add smart audio. But for this price, I think it's a shame that it doesn't doesn't have it. That being said, the Skyzone S140 also doesn't have smart audio and it's my current top pick for the 3 inch class, although the GTM3 is very close to that. So at the back we have an LED and buzzer board and the LEDs are configured and the buzzer is connected to the VBAT but it's not set up as a lost model alarm in the modes and we have an XT30 connector coming out of the back. By the way, I quite like how they have fed the antennas through this tubing at the back for the receiver. It's attached to the frame, but it's not shrunk to the point where you can't remove the antennas when you take the top plate off, so I actually quite like that. And at the front we have the Runcam Micro Eagle, so this is the one with the M12 lens, and it's also switchable from 4x3 to 16x9 but it did come set up in the 4x3 mode and they have given you the controller board and the cable if you want to change that and you'll get a wider field of view if you change it to 16x9. So it's a CMOS camera and it's a really good one. So you can see that the specs are really nice, but going back to earlier about this company working to a spec sheet and not with an end user, Betaflight was flashed with version 3.17 and pretty much nothing was set up. You know, the ESCs were set to one shot, one, two, five. And there are some custom PIDs in there, but I can just tell from the numbers that it's not going to fly well with them. So I've done a full setup with this one. And I know there are some viewers out there that want me to test these models, how they come. So I'll just say this, you can't do that with this model. It needs setting up, so you will need to know beta flight. And there's actually nothing else in the box. So let's get and fly it and see how it performs. Alrighty, let's line of sight this fella. Wanted to get it out of the grass pretty quick. Man, the grass is growing just so quick at the moment. So there's the, a chap who plays golf who cuts this little bit out here for practice. So yeah, I've given it a very similar tune to the S140 because it's similar weight, similar setup, same props. I should get pretty decent results. Well, let's see. Let's check out the punch. 
absolutely bonkers <laughs> but you know that's what I expect from this setup you know we're talking the quickest three inch setup that I've seen on the channel pretty impressive as well isn't it considering you buy it built like this okay let's try some aqua try and keep it in as close as possible yeah I think the tunes pretty nice actually well certainly for line of sight not really hearing any oscillations yeah this setup probably just a little bit too bonkers for line of sight for me but you know it's flying and yeah it's a shame that I had that solder joint break I probably you know have not really had much bad to say about it if it wasn't for that and I kind of do feel like I'm being a little bit picky honestly but with a past like this company has I kind of feel you know critical because you know people are, are gonna have bought those products that just wouldn't fly and I feel for them by the way that model that wouldn't fly the 90 NG I believe if you just swapped the frame then it was fine some sort of vibrations through the frame but man yeah this is this is flying pretty nice let's go for another punch see if I can take it out a little bit hopefully we won't get lost that is just absolutely bonkers can't believe it's doing that every time I see it it's not going to look as good on the camera either because it's wide angle but it doesn't look like it should be possible <laughs> I mean you see those videos of UFOs you know the, the fake ones where the UFO just darts off it looks like that <laughs> but anyways yeah it seems to be flying pretty nice so that's good news so I'll bring it in and we'll see how it performs FPV so I started off with some speed runs and the model didn't quite match the top speed of the Skyzone S140. But I do think that's down to the fact that I'm flying straight into a strong headwind here. And I think the fastest speed it recorded was 108 mile per hour, so still no slouch. And I can't say I'm impressed with these R-Line batteries either, so I don't think that's helping at all. The voltage sag seemed to be even worse than the non-R-Line 850. 50 milliamp and it's a couple of grams heavier than the non R line version so I think that's also going to play a part in the speed result but it's still an impressive top speed and I have no doubt on a better day maybe with the other 850 milliamp 4s battery it could go a little bit faster and maybe match that 112 mile per hour top speed of the sky zone s140 so on the speed runs i was getting a little bit of oscillation on the throttle punches which actually could have also affected the top speed so i spent a couple of packs getting a decent tune out of it so i'll overlay my pids here this is also with an anti-gravity gain of three and the tpa is set to 0 0.40 and i have to say it flew superb with those settings i was struggling a lot with the VTX breaking up 
though, and I think it is down to the VTX itself. So this is the 100 milliwatt setting, and I'd be surprised if it was making 25 milliwatt here. You know, that's just going from the other models that I've flown on this field that ran at 25 milliwatt, and those were performing better than this. And at first I thought it was the antenna placement because, you know, it's quite low at the back of the model, so I took the top off, and there's another hole before the one that it's actually fed through and I fed it through that one and it did give it a lot more clearance from the frame but unfortunately when I flew it it made absolutely no difference and the VTX also sent out quite a lot of ghost channels as well which is fairly normal for a VTX but when I was using my band scanner there were way more ghost channels with this VTX than I've seen with other VTXs on the market and in short I think that the VTX is a weak point on this model and if you want to keep it then you're gonna to have to stay in pretty close you know, I was doing some of those speed runs and getting complete break up at just a hundred meters away so I think I'll be switching the VTX on this one for sure but you know for this price I think it's something that you wouldn't expect to be doing so do I recommend this model? Well, it's a really tough one because in terms of performance, it's actually one of the fastest models out there that you can buy across all classes. And the camera is better than the one on the S140. So that one's got the Foxia Arrow and this one is the CMOS camera. It's a little bit clearer. It deals with dynamic range better and I've also noticed that Banggood has stopped listing the Skyzone S140 on their website it's currently sold out so I don't know if that's going to be discontinued or not although the S140 doesn't come with the Gemfan flash prop so you have to bear that in mind I guess but for me the VTX isn't performing how I'd like and this is using the true diversity system with a bandicoot patch antenna and a Omway cloverleaf antenna so it should be performing better than this so if you aren't fussed about the top end numbers because you know this is a top end performer in terms of speed then there are models like the xjb145 which i believe they're now shipping with smart audio and that does have a really good vtx and then there's the diatone gtm3 with their updated stack and you know that's got the unify in there so you know that can go up to 800 milliwatt if you are after long range but you know again this model is a little bit faster than those other models so you've got to decide which is best for you but i think the spc maker has got some tough competition and if i were choosing i think i'd still pick the skyzone s140 over this one i think gear best is still listing that model actually so the flight time on the 850 milliamp battery was just under four minutes and you'll get under two minutes if you're going full throttle all the time and i know there's a lot of people out there triggered by the fact that the battery is so huge against the quadcopter but you must understand that the capacity of a battery is tied to the number of amps that it can produce and even this high c 850 milliamp battery is sagging below 13 volts on full throttle and that's from a full charge and that is because it's struggling to provide the amps so it could do it with a higher c rating and of course you know the c rating is a multiple of the capacity of the battery so if you go up in size of the battery then you know you can get more amps out of that if the c rating is just as high as like say a smaller battery for example so there you go i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll link to my patreon in the below if you can afford to donate and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers